Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from lands afar and lands near, welcome to Comet Force episode number 58. What is special about 58, you ask? Eh, not, not a whole lot, but we still have an excellent show prepared for you because... Nintendo made moves this week. Their fiscal call revealed a whole lot of success and excitement for the future. A new president and a litany of E3, I don't know their announcements, but some details on what is coming for that presentation, those tournaments, and that treehouse. What's going on, everybody? It's Zach. Gabe is here, and so are your comments. Big thanks, as always, for your thoughts, your theories, your ideas, your little funnies, and your, 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 your favorite topics. We've discussed some of them in the past, and we'll discuss more of them today. Gabe. Yeah. Next week is Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. It is. And it's a chance for you to get your funk on. I expect we had Cat vs. Labo. I now want Gabe versus Funky in a dance-off green screen battle. Funky can't rock like me, though. You know this. Well, that's then good. Prove it. Take it to the top. No, no, you already know. Duel. What's known doesn't need to be proven. That's not how the internet works. Yeah, what's understood doesn't need to be explained. What's known doesn't need to be proven. You know this. Gabe, I just want a <laughs> dance video. I just want a mixtape, man. <laughs> All right, maybe. We'll see. Just want a mixtape. All right. Uh, it was a week full of not, not a whole lot of game announcements, I guess, but just Nintendo did talk about you know Mario Kart 8 Deluxe being absolutely bonkers, Mario Odyssey being bonkers, the Switch selling insanely, and them upping the forecast. And then talking E3, you know, Smash Playable, Smash Focus, 2018, uh, second half being the the centerpiece of everything. So it should uh, it should be good going from here until that big show. But now let's start with a comment from Mundo Despierto. Nope, Mundo Despierto. That means woke world. Whoa. All right. Yeah. And it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty thoughtful comment. He says, Virtual Console and Switch would kill off SNES Classic and the likely N64 Classic. I think in two to three years, once the N64 is sold out, we will see Virtual Console on the Switch, SNES, and N64 games. As far as GameCube and Wii, they're sort of already doing it, starting with Wii U Deluxe versions. GameCube Deluxe game versions seem very likely because they would not mess with the mini classic console sales. And there are two pieces here that are interesting. We talked this week about Virtual Console just maybe never happening. The two pieces I want to pull uh, from this... Very intelligent gentleman is one. Do we think that the mini consoles, the classic consoles, are having an effect on virtual consoles' existence? And two, is there any scenario where virtual console comes like three years into the life cycle? No. To the second thing, no. Uh, it's happening before, or it's not happening at all. I think, but th there has to be some impact. But by, by these uh, consoles, uh, I don't think it's anything as drastic as Mundo here says, but some impact. I, I think it absolutely has to have some. I yeah. mean, again, if these games are available a la carte for five bucks or seven bucks, I don't think the fervor is there for these consoles. Now, you could argue that, well, you can still get it on 3DS, you can still get it on Wii U, and people still went bonkers over the NES Mini when it released. And there is a whole lot of novelty in having a tiny version of the actual console with a curated collection of games, physical things, you know, do create sort of that, like, oh, God, got to go get it, got to wait in line, got to have it. But I have to imagine that at some level Nintendo does think about that, and the separation is not by mistake. Yeah, it also seems like they on purpose like limit how many of those they sell, so it doesn't seem like Nintendo's just trying to sell a bunch of them anyway. I mean, they are, but on a smaller scale, obviously, like they don't make those things readily available at all. You have like to get one, you, you know, they still sell some now every once in a while. They still do restocks, but they're the quantity is so limited. So, yeah, no, I, I think people that want those are still going to want them just because, again, you touched on the novelty of this, like, cool physical collector's item. So that that's why I say if it does impact it, it it's in a minimal way. Yeah. Um, in terms of point two, I don't think there's any real way that this just comes. I've seen a number of people say in the comments this week, like, oh, give it time, give it a couple of years. It doesn't have... I don't think there's a world in which, like, year four Nintendo introduces virtual console. To me, that just seems beyond odd and kind of like pipe dream wishful thinking I, I think it either happens at this e3 or like forget about it yeah i mean we're gonna have to wait on that but in the meantime though we hold, can... hold on one, oh. one quick thing n64 classic this year possible i mean i i mean i don't i don't know i would like it yeah i i would like it as well the only thing is like i'm i can... 
eh, I, I like I love saying unpopular things. Apparently, how many like truly like great games does N sixty four have? It would be a harder collection to establish, especially given like third parties and such. Yeah, because there's aren't that many. Like the catalog just isn't big. Yeah, and you can't put Goldeneye um, on there just because who owns Goldeneye now? Like I, I think it's Activision yeah. that still like did that a couple years ago. But yeah, a, a lot of the very cool stuff from back then, you you just can't do now. Yeah, so. so that one might be a little trickier, but they do have the trademarks registered, and I would be not at all surprised if Nintendo made that a part of their E3 presentation. I, I'd rather have a Game Boy. Yeah, that's also another viable option. I think that one would be cool as well. Yeah, that's what I really have. Okay, now it moves along to Hybrid Mark. Yes. Says, if they don't announce uh, Fortnite, Destiny 3, I'll be pissed and sell my Switchy. So, grammar may not be the greatest here, but this idea of one... I think I think the expectation is that Fortnite is going to be there. We recently heard through a U.S. Gamer article that maybe some more legitimate sources are saying, eh, there's not really anything going on with Fortnite right now. Um, so you could have a lot of eager anticipation deflate into nothing. But I wanted to ask you, Gabe, like I know obviously we're not going to sell our Switch, but oh, is there damn. a... Okay, let me go take down a Craigslist ad real quick. Is, <laughs> is there either an announcement or a non-announcement, like a... a a missing announcement that would bring you this kind of frustration or sadness. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't get sad, Zach. <laughs> no, uh, no, because I, 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 everything's coming. Metroid's coming. Pokemon's coming. Like we know that. Like I can't. Yeah. The, the third party stuff. I know this is unpopular, but I'll play it on other platforms. I'm okay with that. Like I, I love my Switch. It, it's my favorite console. I play it more than any other console. I'm not counting PC as a console. So. No, no, I, I, I don't think I would get this, this annoyed at anything. I like my switching. Um, for me, <laughs> for this year specifically, if there was a weird way where Yoshi was the highlight for the fall, <laughs> nah. I mean, nothing against the little green dino, but that would drive me insane. Well, if it was like, hey, Yoshi, but we know that's our October, Smash November, December game. Yeah, I mean, but we know Smash is this. Yeah, I know, but no. if Smash is September. And Yoshi is what they have for October, November, December. Nah. I would be beyond frustrated. No, Fire Emblem's still coming. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just saying, okay. hypothetically. Okay. Uh, David T. makes a really interesting point, and we're not trying to start any flame wars here, but I do think it's just incredible to consider the power of some of these franchises. Mario Odyssey alone has outsold every PS4 exclusive, and PS4 is an install base of over 75 million compared to Switch's 18 million. Now, that's insane. Now, he's talking individually, not combined, obviously. Um, Horizon is close. I'm sure God of War will be up there. But yeah, after a year, or, or I guess way less than a year, s- six months, Mario Odyssey is insanely successful. And the power of these Nintendo characters and franchises, I mean, if you just step back, like we're so immersed in it day by day, it doesn't seem impressive, I think. But man, to say in 2018 that Mario still has that clout, that's just like such a huge testament to that character, the game designers over there, and just the overall development of that franchise each and every entry. The fact that you have these incredible, massive scope, huge team, insane undertakings like Horizon Zero Dawn. It's crazy town that even given a very limited install base, the loyalty that that franchise or that fans of that franchise have and then just the awe-inspiring just mega power that it still has. I, I don't know. I, I find that just really, really inspiring. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot that you can attribute to it, right? Like, Mario is a known quantity for parents and people that grew up with Nintendo. Like, your grandparents know Mario. You go ask your parents about Horizon, they don't know what you're talking about. So, mm-hmm. yeah, like, I mean, it makes sense. It, it, it's a known commodity for something that, like, has been around. There are known commodities that have fallen, though. I mean, if we look at sort of the rise and fall of franchises, other characters, I don't want to call anyone specific out. I'll, 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 I'll do it. Can I? Okay. Yeah. H- Halo's a big one, right? Like, I thought that that would, like, that that's, like, fallen off a little bit. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, characters, like, not that he was ever at that level, but, like, Sonic or, or you know, things like that. Yeah. Um, Th- They've done a really good job with Mario. They make sure that every time he's on their console in a game all about him they make sure it's really 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 good and that has a lot to do with it you know when you're purchasing uh, purchasing a 3d mario game that you're gonna get a quality product there's no question to that um a lot of these other franchises there's always questions and they've had bad outings uh, shout out to sonic forces so 
Yeah, uh, they've done a good job of maintaining, you know, quality and, and you know, good word of mouth, all that. Yeah, M- Mario is getting like a own like theme park rides for crying out loud. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's just different levels, I guess. And Nintendo's exclusives, you know, regardless of where you think the Switch should be or how you feel about its lineup or how it handles third parties or indie games or virtual console, like. The fact that time after time they deliver these exclusives that not only are received so well critically but sell so well, like they have a decades long just classics house over there. They are able to grind out the equivalent of Academy Awards over and over and over again. And, and at some level, like that's just, it's really just cool. So, yeah. Thanks for the thought, David. Greninja and Company. Or and Co. says, I'm really surprised that they didn't definitively say if Pokemon was 2018 or 2019. If it comes out this year, it would obviously be the, be the big holiday title, especially if Smash comes out when the online service does. But if it comes out 2019, they don't really have a good holiday title for 2018. And then I would imagine that it would be Q1 2019 or at least early Q2 2019. Talking about Pokemon and the fact that during the fiscal financial presentation paper thing that they released... They still call it a 2018 or later game. And, you know, I said this to Zach off air during the week. I was like, dude, I wonder if Nintendo knows when Pokemon's coming. I think they're really, really trying to get it out this year. Like, I think that's the hope. But they're developing for a console that they've never developed for in, in the... I'm talking about Pokemon Company and Game Freak. Like, they've never made a Switch game. So, I don't know. Is it, like, learning the platform? Is it just trying to make the best game they can? Or is are they... I'm curious if the game is, like, done. And if it Mm -hmm. is done, does it become just, like, marketing? Like, hey, Red Dead's coming this holiday. Let's get away from that. I don't know that Pokemon has much to worry about, specifically with Red Dead. But, yeah, they're not committing. Um, I think that's one that would make some people throw their systems. Like, if there was no mention of Pokemon. But you know it's coming. Like, sure, throw your system, but... It's still coming next year, even if it doesn't come this year. I know, but just in terms of like, okay, if they didn't even talk about it at E3, I'm, if we're at you know June sixteenth and we have nothing, like that would be frustrating. I wouldn't feel any differently about Pokemon than I do today if they didn't talk about it at E3 or at all. Well, obviously the game is going to be the same game, but it's still frustrating. Not not to me, but I I understand I'm probably weird when it comes to that. I do feel, I do feel strongly that I. I do not see Nintendo using up Pokemon in the Q1 slot. Those slots, I know those that slots they, sell well, dude. Especially, I know especially they do, now. But especially I don't, now. <sighs> Nintendo traditionally has not done that. Nintendo traditionally hasn't done a lot what they're doing now. They're, they're, they're a different company. New president, by I the still, way. I still think, you know, I don't know. I To me, so, if it's not... You do- I don't see this being like a February release. So you don't... All right, cool. Look, if Pokemon doesn't come out this year, you think it doesn't come out to fall of next year? I can't see that happening. I think if it doesn't come out this year, I think we're completely off base about their plans and and where Pokemon's at. And so at that point, I have no idea. I think if it doesn't come out this year, it, it reveals that, hey, so many of these leakers and people are just completely wrong. And two, oh, we know that... Be <laughs> that we're completely off base on what we think is going on. I mean, what if there is a weird world where Nintendo D3 says Metroid Prime 4 November and doesn't mention Pokemon? I, I mean, nothing's impossible, right? But that seems highly unlikely. But it seems highly unlikely because of what we've heard, not because of what Nintendo has said. Yeah, well, I mean, I, mean I, guess, I, guess, I guess you could look into the fact that Pokemon 2018 or later. Yeah. And Metroid TBD. Yeah, they've never said 2018 for for Metroid. Okay, so we go off that, then yeah, I... Greninja, I just don't... And maybe they do, but I do not foresee Nintendo feeling comfortable given the focus of Pokemon, given the console selling capacity and capability of Pokemon. I don't foresee them using that in in that early slot but well why not though because you're already selling consoles and, and fall regardless you're gonna have smash on shelves and you're gonna get a lot of people that like we're waiting for that and they're all buying it regardless like smash is a 
console seller as well. If this is a new Smash, which again, we don't know, I have to reiterate that every time. If it's a new Smash, they can easily just not put po- uh, Pokemon out this year because Smash will carry the momentum for the holiday season. Those things are going to sell. And another thing that no one likes to think about, and I don't think it happens, but if you give like a $50 price drop to the Switch just for Black Friday or something like that, you never going to happen. Okay, that's fine. You move a ton of them. So, like, there's ways to just not put Pokemon out. Like, yes, Pokemon's going to sell consoles, but I think Pokemon sells just as many consoles whatever month it's released in because it's that big of a franchise now. You put Pokemon out in March, it doesn't sell any less consoles than it does in December. No way. I think so. Absolutely, because remember, a lot of the target for the Pokemon console is the parent buying for the kid. This is not a case of Halo or God of War coming out where, oh, the the 28-year-old. I mean, yes, there still are those people, but a lot of those sales are going to come from parents and families and gifts i mean i I, all of it is is hyperbole at this point since we have no idea but i firmly think it is a you still think you still think pokemon's coming out this year right yeah okay Uh i mean that, that that's okay i really hope it does snickety snee says that all this focus at e3 for smash really makes me think it's a new game not a port they wouldn't go all out like this for a port how do you feel about that, Gabe? If this was just a deluxe version, do you think that they would give it this attention? Yeah, I, I, I don't, I, I don't. I've always thought it's a new game. I still think it's a new game, but I don't think that this means that it's a new game. Yeah, like Smash is big enough that I keep saying big enough a lot. I hate saying that. <laughs> Smash is is big enough that even a port, especially with the performance of Deluxe uh, Mario Kart Eight. Like, that sold extremely well. Better on Switch than it did on Wii U. I can see that exact same thing happening for Smash, even if it's a port. Like, yeah, people are going to be unhappy about it. But at the end of the day, you're going to get to play Smash on your Switch. So Mm -hmm. people will very quickly get over that, and this thing will still do very well. I think they saw that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, like, did very well. They're like, okay, we have nothing to worry about here, even if it is a port. Like, a very enhanced port. So, you know, I'm still crossing my fingers for a new game. Uh, That's still my hope. But I don't think it's certainly not a port yeah i mean i think that nintendo amps this up no matter what i think they in the scenario that it is a deluxe they would feel like okay we have such a a broader and new audience with the switch there's so much hype we need to put our full emphasis behind this uh, because not only is it going to launch a smash brothers game on our best-selling console of all time but it also is going to help usher in the online service so i think there is a major push behind smash no matter what this is even if it was a straight up port like to the t Um, I very much hope that there's a whole lot new there. Um, but again, it it may also be a, a hype thing, you know, look at it this way. The game is going to be in the presentation. The game is going to be playable at E3. They have a tournament. It is very possible that other game, I mean... Yoshi will be playable. Yoshi will be at the at the presentation. It won't have a tournament, but it's because it can't facilitate one. Splatoon 2, depending on when Octo, the Octo expansion comes out, it could be part of all three. It could be playable at E3. It could be in the presentation, <laughs> and it could have a tournament. And that is not a new well, game. Well, no, that there, game there is year. a Splatoon tournament. We know about it. That's what I'm saying. So it yeah. could... So I don't think it means it. I'm not going to... We don't need to, to you know... Get into if it is or if it isn't, um, but yeah, I, I think sadly I don't think it means it. I think that yeah, they're going to spend a lot of time and hopefully there's a lot of cool stuff to talk about. But Nintendo will give marketing muscle behind one of their biggest properties, regardless of what exact iteration it is. Yeah, and here's a tiny sneak peek for a video we have coming this week. I think that this uh, online launch, the launch of online that they're apparently getting detail in May. I think that and Smash are going to be so, so tied together, hopefully. Uh, I'm really hoping about that, and, and you know, I'll, I'll make a video you know, with, with, with something about that. But yeah, just a little sneak peek. But for now, let's move on to Final Zero. It says, after playing God of War, I'm actually starving for some mature Nintendo new IP. I'm fed up by Zelda Mario Childish theme. I want something mature from Nintendo, something good with an epic story. Now, I don't think we need necessarily mature, but the idea of an epic story is just... So fascinating to me because the genre Nintendo just so rarely tackles. And yes, they sort of have in secondary and tertiary ways with some of the RPGs. But in this new vein of third-person, story-heavy, cinematic-heavy games, like I would so love Nintendo to do that. And maybe it doesn't fit with their current stable of characters. Maybe that would come off as corny, cheesy, or just completely unworkable. 
But if they were going to do a new IP as a single player game, I would love to see this happen. Like the idea of Nintendo mechanics tied to a very strong plot is so exciting and so intriguing. And how would that work? What would they do? What story would they choose to tell? I wonder if Nintendo has any desire to do that. And if they ever will attempt to, you know, have something with the impact or the character development of a Last of Us or a God of War. It would be amazing, right? But, but again, I continue to say unpopular things today. I I don't I don't go to McDonald's and ask for pizza, like, I, or I don't go mm. to Pizza Hut and ask for a burger. Like that's not what Nintendo does. They 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 do what they do, and Sony does what they do, and I'm okay with that for the most part. Yeah, I, I would love to see something like this uh, on Switch. It just it's never really happened on that scale. So I don't I don't know why. Yeah, I I I I don't know. I guess eh, it's complicated. My feelings about this are very complicated. I don't foresee it happening either. I just don't. I think it's just out of Nintendo's wheelhouse, and I don't know that they're interested in being a part of that. But man, a new IP that wasn't multiplayer focused, as Arms and Splatoon have been, that would be so cool. Yeah, I think the closest we get to to what you're talking about here is hopefully Metroid. I mean, we see what we'll see what they do with that. I mean, you know, that's first party. I mean, uh, f- uh, first person, excuse me. Like, as far as, like, the gameplay, but as far as we know. I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll change that up. But, right. But they do story stuff very well, and it's not mature-rated, but it is mature thematically. So, I don't know. Maybe Metroid. The Snoopy clone says, You should be worried. When Nintendo becomes successful, everything will hit the fan. The Wii was very successful in its first two years. After that, it just went downhill. Do you foresee a scenario game... Where the the Switch has so much success that Nintendo just like cha ching and dives into their money pits like Scrooge McDuck and just screws everything up. No, no, I don't, I don't think so. It, it's hard for them to right because even even with the with the Wii right, the a lot of people's complaints with that were like, hey, like a ton of shovelware, like, but Nintendo supported that platform for a very long time. Like there was there was mm-hmm. like great games on there until the very last year, so. Mm-hmm. You know, even like smaller games, like things like The Conduit, right? That's still like a really quality experience on Wii that you know a lot of people didn't play. Like Nintendo makes sure that, for better or worse, their platforms stay alive. 3DS apparently isn't going anywhere, Zach. They want to make things for that, like games for that thing until 2020. They say so. Right. Yeah. No. I. I mean, it depends on what you mean by it going downhill, right? Because I, I, after, I guess just sort of them. You know, the the very strict and dedicated approach they've taken to constant releases, constantly pumping that calendar full of their properties, indie titles, etc. I mean, I don't I do not foresee a scenario where success brings about complacency. I kind of get what he's saying about the Wii was a hit, but to me it's because the Wii was not a hit because they were doing all these amazing things release wise. It was because the novelty of the Wii ran all ran out. The yeah. the novelty of motion ran out. The what you could do with those games and what people wanted out of it kind of ran out. It wasn't so much like, oh my god, Nintendo star started that initial lineup and then like gave up. It, it was very much that the gimmick wore out, and I don't foresee the gimmick of the Switch ever wearing out because it's at the end of the day, it's really not a gimmick. It's just a multifaceted approach to how you can experience a game. And I don't. I guess what I'm saying is like the reason the Wii's success declined. I don't think was like Nintendo getting lazy as you may be indicating here snoopy clone nintendo has found himself in a very like amazing position with these indies indies are not going to stop putting games on switch like that's not happening there's the audience is there and it's not going anywhere more and more of these things are being sold so no matter what indie support's going to continue nintendo support's going to continue uh third party is the only question mark there but i mean historically nintendo doesn't even have like amazing third party support anyways they're getting a lot of really cool stuff done now they have dark souls coming doom wolfenstein uh, all, all of these games that we never expected to see on the switch are happening so that makes me hopeful for what's coming as well now i, I think we have nothing to worry about if anything it gets better yeah i i think once we have the confirmation that third parties are are doing good stuff, which we're, you know, fingers crossed going to get at E3. I think a lot of this just, I think we're smooth sailing. Fra- All right, Gabe, take us to this big one about E3. Francis J. Ram says, I will say this again because every year with E3, it's always the same reaction. People expect way so much at E3, and then when they show 
What's at E3, uh, they get disappointed. It's not only Nintendo people should uh, be worried about. It's the same thing with Microsoft and Sony. I get it. Everyone wants, everyone wants new games and not ports or remasters of games that we played in the past. I'm not saying everyone should not be excited for E3. All I'm saying is that don't get your expectations too high. Keep it low and maybe you'll be surprised of what Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony will show you. Yeah, hype is always dangerous, Francis. I, I feel such a type of way about this, though, because at the end of the day, these are... Multi, 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 multi million dollar and billion dollar companies that they should put out. And I, I think we should fully expect them to. And I think, you know, when as a gaming fan or as a gaming consumer, you're not owed anything. But from an expectation standpoint, when you're when you're dumping hundreds of dollars every year into these titles and into these consoles, and when they by all accounts, have the capability, the capacity, and the capital to make good stuff happen. I think it's reasonable to expect that, and I, I don't know. I, at some level, I think like holding, holding publishers to a standard of quality and consistency isn't necessarily a bad thing. Mm, I don't. I don't agree. <sighs> Microsoft, right? Big outlier here, that, that by all accounts, as far as we know. Not a whole lot coming up. There's just like a rumor like Fable's coming back. Halo can probably come back because it's time to. Uh, who knows? But they haven't had the strongest couple of years. And I think that's and, incredibly disappointing. Yeah, but it's not because they don't want to. Like, that's the other thing. Like, none of these, like, publishers and developers are, like, sitting there being like, hey, we can be truly exciting. Let's not do it. That Like, they're... They're doing what they can with what they have. Like, these companies are not dumb. They know how to make money. They are putting their resources where they need to be put. And, dude, like, it's just a reality that, in most cases, game development is now harder and more time-consuming than it has ever been. All of these Sony games that, you know, we've known about for quite some time, and and now they're starting to come out. Uh, Spider-Man's coming. Days Gone is, you know, still coming at some point. Uh, God of War just released, and that's an amazing game by all accounts. But those things are not very quickly made. You need a lot of time to be put into into these. And now with new technology continuing to emerge, uh, 4K, you know, Scorpio came out, PS4 Pro came out. Like, those things aren't just, like, made for free. Like, research development needs to go into that. Uh, yeah, but a lot of it is also mistakes. And I'm not saying that that's not justifiable, but a lot of, like, for example, Microsoft specifically... Games like Scalebound that just didn't make it to completion. Games like Crackdown 3 that have clearly hit insane, you know, hiccups along the way. It's not like, oh, they they just couldn't do it. There were errors and issues along the way. And yeah, that, that, yeah that's understandable, that's but that's I don't know saying. that we should just, like, be like, well, okay, they, they it, you know, make mistakes and not release stuff. And Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard. Like, you don't think Microsoft wants to release, like, a, a big game? Like, every... Oh, of course they want to, yeah, but like it, it's... I also wanted to score 30 points every basketball game. Just because I didn't, I don't think people should feel sorry for me. No, it's I mean, not, at it's some not, level, it's, you have to expect production. It's not a, like about, like, feeling like sorry for them. It's, you know, be patient. These things are coming. It, uh, are they? Yeah. Dude. In Microsoft's case, I don't know. We have no idea. Yeah, but they have studios that are working on things. Like, we know... I just think it's... We we know that... that um, God, I'm, I'm blanking out completely. Um, Quantum Break? Who, who made that? Remedy? Remedy, yeah. I was going to say Rare, but they just did see these. <laughs> like, we know Remedy is working on the next big thing, but what they do is always so ambitious, like, you know, for better or worse. It's so ambitious right, but, that but it takes some time. Don't you feel a type of way about, in Microsoft's case, we'll stay on that example, them utilizing Sea of Thieves, a very half-baked, by all accounts, early access title, being utilized as a tentpole release for a console that costs, you know, upwards of $500 to buy? Well, no, because they've put out other stuff and, like, they don't have anything else ready, so they had to position that as, like, Yeah, but, Gabe, what I'm saying is I know they don't have anything ready. I'm just saying, like, I don't know that we should just say, like, oh, they they tried. Like, at some level, it's frustrating that they don't have anything else ready. At some level, you know, I buy my $450 Xbox One X and they don't have anything ready. Like, I don't feel sorry for them. They're, they're appeasing people that bought Scorpio a, a little bit. Like, yes, it's not how we want it, but all these, like, backwards compatible games that are, like, now doing 4K, like, people seem to really be enjoying that. <sighs> I, I, again, it, like, it feels like they're trying, and I, I, would, I will never diminish how hard it is to make games. We have no idea, but that is not an easy process. It's not. Yeah, but it's also, and, it's also hard to write, you know, amazing books. It's hard to 
score baskets in basketball. It's hard to come up with new products. Yeah, but, but it's it's, I, it's it's different, right? It is, that is their job, Gabe. Yeah, but make. Making a basket takes seconds, and it costs you zero dollars. But it also takes years to all the okay. Whatever that's example a terrible, you want to use, a, like ter- basketball is a terrible example. Get off of that. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I think it's super silly to say that. Oh, it's hard. So like, if they can't do it, like, oh, oh, okay, just wait for them. Like, Dude, that's their like, job. Yeah, man, but they're working on it. Like, I, are I, they? Do we? I mean. Yes, game, studio closures, bad decisions. Yes, game, lack of games lack of that micro- hires. Microsoft is working on games. Yes, that's just a fact. Right, but I'm saying you're acting like these people are the greatest humans in the world, doing their hundred percent oh, best, and if it doesn't come I, together, I, I then don't, I don't know what I've said. Yeah, I, I mean, let, let's even get off of this because people always say that we sound combative, I and mean, we're not. Me and Zach are just both passionate. Like that's all it is. Um, I just okay, fin- final point, and and you can make yours after this. I just do not feel. When it's coming to something that, in the same way that I don't feel that you're owed a, oh, it, 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 you know, I paid 60, this game should be whatever. I, I very much subscribe to like, I don't think there should be, I don't think there's really a whole lot of room for sympathy in, in consumer industry. It, like on it's both not, sides of the coin for the consumer and for the publisher. It's not even sympathy. It's, it very much is. You're saying they're trying. No, it's understanding. It's hard. I, I, first of all, I'm not using that cadence, so relax. Um, <laughs> like, it, it, it's not like a sympathy thing. It's like an acknowledgement like, hey, this stuff is coming, but it's taking some time. That's all it is. Like, again, these games that you enjoy, right? You, you sit here and you play God of War for, for 30, 40 hours. Cool. Okay. They, they work on it for hundreds of hours. Hundreds of people like, are pouring so much into these things. And this isn't like some like easy magical formula, right? And look, let, let, let's let's crackdowns coming out, right? I, I hate to use crackdown as an example. Let, let me get off specifics. You know, company X puts game A out. Game A comes out, and it's quality game, but it does nothing groundbreaking. Like then people are like, oh, like this just copied this other game, and it does like these companies are screwed. Do they do screw? Do they don't like they're so. It's not frustrating you if. Nothing releases, nothing releases, and then Crackdown 3, after tons of delays and development issues, releases and nobody cares and nobody likes it. That's not frustrating. To me. I'm not saying we can do a better job. I'm not saying you and me as armchair game developers can do a better job. I would never insinuate that. But I don't think there's any reason that we aren't allowed to be frustrated by bad decisions, poor no, I, I, products and, and no, no shot at anybody that does feel hurt about this. But I feel like I'm much more sensible than that, right? Yeah, I bought a $500 console when when – Xbox One Origin came out. I do not have a, a Slim. I don't have a Scorpio because I am informed and I know that, hey, that's not worth it for me. That experience, I can get it on PC with the exact same games now because they put them all there. So I pay, paid $500 for this thing. I've played dozens and dozens and dozens of games on Xbox One. So no, I'm not mad that I'm not playing my games on Xbox One. I haven't turned my so Xbox One Microsoft on in came months. Out, if Microsoft came out at E3 and said, we're really working hard on games, hope you can be patient, you're, you're so okay. Zach, you know I don't care. <laughs> like I know, so I guess that's it. I, I you know, at the end of the day, different strokes for different folks. I very much think expecting great things out of E three is totally normal and valid. And Gabe thinks that it's fine if it's not. And so well, to Francis be clear, Jaren. I never said that. But yeah, it's yeah. I think there's and we we completely got away from what he said. I think it's smart to go in with a little bit more tempered expectations if you can. You know, but but <laughs> it just like applies to my whole life philosophy. I hate this idea that you should be l- going into things and situations with low expectations. I-, I hate that. I think that's just like the saddest, silliest thing. I'm very happy, Hector. So it's your turn. You do it. <laughs> Hector Soto says, "God, Ooh, the Switch is the only console where you have to speculate if a game is coming to it." It's a fact. I mean, there there's speculation elsewhere. Are we getting Halo this year? But I guess no, the no, idea that's not, of you like know, that's not what he means. <laughs> If, I guess if like a game gets announced and then like the idea of ooh maybe it's still coming and I think honestly we've been saying this for months but this E3 is going to reveal so much because if it does come through that like hey Fortnite actually coming to Switch hey Call of Duty actually coming to Switch then there is validity and we can always be suspicious but if none of that actually comes to fruition then I say scrap that plan and if it's not announced who cares what r- rumor connoisseurs say we're we're not gonna fall for that anymore yeah for, for anyone curious hector here is talking about uh black ops specifically so i you know that, that's the type of thing he's talking about where we know black ops is coming we know it's a thing we just don't know if it's coming to switch or not 
and you and know, the discussion yeah of like yeah. is it yeah and, and is this it? applies to so many third party things like madden's gonna be starting to get talked about soon we don't know that it's coming to switch is it coming to switch like don't you think that the e3 like answers this question kind of broad stroke for us yeah i i think i think e3 is going to be very telling as far as this goes um yeah. but but i don't think if the like third party stuff doesn't happen at e3 i don't think that doesn't mean it's not coming just because, again, Nintendo's in such a unique position that they can have, like, a direct that says, hey, this is a third-party direct. Like, if... I guess I mean more from the standpoint of, like, if the games that are rumored all fall flat, then I think it would be silly to next time games are rumored without a, a concurrent announcement to, like, assume that again. Like, if all... If, 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 like, Fortnite isn't happening and Call of Duty isn't happening, then I say we scrap this notion that... Oh ho! It didn't get announced today, but wait for the Switch version. Like, oh yeah, yeah. You you know how I feel about that. I don't. I don't. I'm not about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's all I meant. I, don't, I mean, third party support doesn't happen in E3. I will be majorly shocked and bummed, but it still could happen. But I think the idea of like the the rumored like it's not there, but it actually is there type thing. I think we we kind of throw that idea out the window. Yeah, I hope that stops. Right. You know, because that 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 is like Hector says exclusively a Switch. Thing. People keep no one's out here saying like, oh, they didn't mention uh, God of War for Xbox, but it's coming. <laughs> oh, they didn't mention. Well, that's a weird one. You know, Spyro. Let's talk about Spyro, right? You know that gets announced. People still think that our Switch version is happening. They, I know. I was just trying to come up with like another console that people aren't saying like. Yeah, but God oh, of War is like made by Sony, so like. That, I know, Gabe. I know you know, but we confuse people, Zach. <laughs> conceptually, that like okay, say there's, say State of Decay. People aren't like is. Is it coming to PlayStation? We just accept that it got announced for Xbox One, and there was a time where that got a little dicey uh, in the sort of the the Tomb Raider th- debacle of like, is it exclusive or a timed exclusive or what? And so I guess that kind of made things dicey for a bit. One, I feel like that era is kind of over. The idea of throwing money bags for for some time. Sony um, just did it with pr- Crash. Fair, but but there wasn't like. I guess that's different to me because it's like eventually bringing it multi-platform after a timed exclusivity versus the idea that the game is there all along. Like, okay, the, here's the very distinct difference. Crash was announced as a PS4 game. There was no mention of Xbox One because there was a, a set timed exclusivity, so it wasn't getting announced until that was over. The Switch thing is it actually is coming out, no time exclusivity. It's just they're just not talking about it yet. And that, I guess, is like the cons- conversation that I think and I hope E3 eradicates or enforces one way or the other. Yeah. And again, you know how I feel about that. So, all right. We'll move on to the last comment of the day from our friend Raging Red. Very frequent commenter. Says, Mario Tennis, Asus, and Wolfenstein 2 uh, on June. Crash, Octopath, and Captain Toad on July. Switch is looking good for the summer. Zach, are you looking good for the summer? I always look good for the summer. Mm, right. Actually, I feel like I look better in the spring and the fall. I feel like given my skinny stature, like <laughs> pants and long sleeves kind of suit me better. I feel a little little, little small with short sleeves and shorts. I don't like it when you wear jeans. I love wearing jeans. I don't know why you don't like that. I don't like it. When, I, 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 this is so weird that we're talking about this. You don't like wearing jeans at all. No, 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 I don't. I'm open about that. But I don't like it when you wear jeans. I'd much rather see you in sweats. But that's just me. I don't understand why. I, we can get into why off. Like, can, I have a, can I have an on-camera answer? <laughs> Yeah, sure. Um, your legs are super skinny. Yeah, like, and, and then you wear like these like skinny. You look like a twig. I think the that's the idea. No, though. but I don't. I don't. They, it just looks weird to me when you wear jeans. Like <laughs> this is so dumb that we're talking about this. You post. <laughs> okay, there's a picture on Instagram. Have you seen this photo? I'm at the the VR studio. Yeah, that, that's exactly street. the picture I was about to, to to bring up. I hate the way you look in those jeans, and this is <laughs> dumb. And to be clear, Zach, we said this in a stream. Zach and I are are, are not gay. <laughs> <laughs> we're not gay we're we, we're not romantically involved for sorry guys but yeah i i don't like the way you look in those jeans i thought that when you posted that picture i i, I'm a, I I'm those a, are my favorite jeans those are my go-to jeans i wear those to events i wear those coaching i wear those <laughs> no zach what you're missing dates. is i don't like you in any jeans <laughs> okay whatever wear sweats uh, the switch <laughs> um so the the first half of the year has been I think by majority of Switch owners' accounts, lackluster. Yes, Bayonetta was fun. Yes, Kirby was intriguing. Yes, the indies still come, you know, with the force of a of a ten foot wave. 
<laughs> but it wasn't, you know, and, and, you know, yeah, we got DKC, Tropical Freeze, and Hirai, uh, Hyrule Warriors, whatever, on the horizon. But I definitely think it was a weak first couple months. This does look a lot stronger. You know, you're not listing everything Raging Red, um, but Mario Tennis Aces, for some reason, has me stupid excited. I think Wolfenstein 2, despite being late, is an important port for Switch. Um, it looks good. It seems to play good. Crash is another fun one, even though it is a you know late port. Captain Toad, Wait, that game deserves more no. play. What'd you do that for? Octopath. Yeah, what'd you skip it for? Don't skip it. Well, I was gonna I was gonna bring it up last because I think it's the 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 smallest game on the list. Think it's the second most exciting game on the list. Yeah, but I think it's just has the second least impact. So. Oh yeah, I guess. Not even I, the least impact. I, I was just trying to get you to respect Octopath. That's it. Um, I think it's a solid summer. Um, I hope that Nintendo announces a game for July or August that is exciting. Because remember last year we got ARMS in Splatoon 2, Rabbids. So this does not compare to that to me. Um, I very much feel like this is going to be a lopsided year. I think the hype levels for August through December are going to be five times as high as January through July. No no discredit to these games. Like I said, I'm very pumped for Mario Tennis Aces, but I do still feel like we are in a period of kind of weakness until beyond the calendar that we know. Yeah. To me, it's not until Fire Emblem, Smash, Yoshi, and the theoretical Pokemon come out that I say, like, we're in a strong period for Switch. Do, am I broken? Like, I think that this is more than just, like, an okay lineup. I think this is great. Like, I think this is a phenomenal lineup. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm my expectations are all skewed. I think. I mean, Wolfenstein Two is a ten month, eight month, nine month late port. Mm-hmm. Crash is a year late port. Yeah. Captain Toad is a re release port with a couple new levels. Am I Octopath wrong for not a... caring about any of that? I haven't played Wolfenstein. I haven't yeah. played Crash. New games to me. I don't care. Sure. I guess from the perspective of someone that has played Captain Toad, Wolfenstein Two, and Crash. Yeah, I haven't played any of those, so these okay. are all new to me. And also, Nintendo's investment here is Mario Tennis Aces and a port of Captain Toad. So when when I just look back and compare that to uh, Mario Bros. Rabbids, Arms, and Splatoon Two, all back to back to back, like that trio is so strong to me. That that anchored the middle of the year so strong last year, and I don't see that this year. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the sad reality is that Nintendo has a limited amount of franchises, and they gotta space them out throughout this life cycle. They don't like doing the same franchises over and over and over, like. Yeah, I mean, well, it's also just like you said, you you know you bust a, a lot of your your stuff the first year to get those sales going and propel that system, which I think is super smart. But development wise, not like you can have a studio releasing new titles. That's the purpose of Tropical Freeze, Hyrule, and Captain Toad to sort of fill the gap while these studios prepare for the fall and beyond. <laughs> um, and luckily, Tennis Ace is in there as a brand new one. Um, I will. N- I don't cra- again. Like I said, I beat Crash. So. Yeah, but yep. I mean, yeah. if you haven't played the games, it, it is it is far stronger than if you have. Yeah, Zach. Let me say, this has been one of my favorite shows. <laughs> I, uh, I love this. I, I know I'm, people people always feel weird when when like our tone shift a little bit and, and we get a little bit like I don't think we're aggressive, but quote unquote aggressive towards each other. But people need to just. I, I hope they understand that that's we've known each other for years, and we we're both passionate people. Zach and I. Well, I can't speak. I, yes, I can. I can speak for both of us when I say that neither of us feels the type of way like negatively about each other, like because of these comments, because we get a little heated. I just want everybody to understand that because you know when it does happen, we see the comments, and you know oftentimes we laugh, not not because like you guys are like anything. It's just that we know us, and we're perfectly okay with with the way we are. And yeah, I just it's silly. We have fundamentally different views on a number of things, so it's obviously <laughs> going to take shape. But that does not stop the comment force train. Thank you for filling our hearts with your comments. It warms the soul Except as we move towards doesn't warm summer. Zach's soul. Zach wants you to put every game out now. I do. I, I, nev- I don't have sympathy for, for <laughs> delays. I don't have sympathy. For, I mean... Yeah, guys, send more comments to Warm Zach's heart. It needs more warning. Again, Gabe, if, if you're working for a company and you say, like, hey, like, I really tried to get it done. It just didn't happen. I don't think they feel the same sympathy that you feel for these game devs. But. Maybe I'm just more of a sympathetic person. I love everyone. <laughs> just spread, spread love. I, don't want, I, love, I do not want Gabe. to sound it's like about, Kanye. This here. is a company. Don't this turn isn't... me into Kanye. Come on, let's go. <laughs> I view... I view... I get that there are people and things happen, but like at the end of the day, like 
I'm looking to buy the game. I'm not looking to buy the, the, the people and their pasts and their... I don't, I don't know. Maybe that's a stone-cold point of view. Like, I love the sensitivity and I love the humanity behind games. I love seeing, like, Cory Barlog get emotionally touched by the God of War reviews. I love that. I think that's awesome. But if God of War sucked, I don't really care that Cory cried about it. Like, it still sucks. Thank God it doesn't. But, yeah, okay, we can... If you want to subscribe to the second podcast where me and Gabe talk about life, the world, personalities, and people. Cool. You'll hate us there. <laughs> you'll hate us there. So thank goodness that's not a thing. But we love you, and we can't wait for more Nintendo Switch goodness. We're getting closer to E3. The uh, the hype train is going to take off of station soon. In the meantime, it's time for advice. We need a little advice jingle. If anyone's musically talented or not musically talented, please send us a advice jingle so we can have like a little like – Time for advice. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, like a little, a little jingle for, you, there. for advice. That's it. Yeah. You're up. Oh. Duh. Uh, uh. Man, why always make me go first? You know, I don't think about these until the day of. It's awkward for me to say, and now advice, and Zach, you go first. Oh, okay. I'll go. Okay. That's just. Calm down is my advice, Zach. <laughs> Yo, be sympathetic with people. <laughs> I am a people. I'm just not a th- things and products. These products don't get made by themselves. They're not autonomous. Oh okay, so if I get an ice cream cone and it's just made horribly wrong, it's just like gritty and chalky, I should feel sad because the person just screwed up? Um, God, do I have actual advice today? Oh, hype, 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 hype. Hype is dangerous. Hype is like a drug. Don't take it. <laughs> you know, it's addicting. I think you're talking about Haze, Gabe. That game came out years ago. <laughs> God, shout out to PlayStation 3. No, uh, I, no I'm, I'm talking more because of Avengers, right? I, I saw the movie yeah. already. I, I'm not going to talk about what I think about the movie. But just like the hype and, and, and the hyperbole and the insanity around that movie is so odd to me. And, and you know, maybe just control your hype a little bit. <laughs> Zach wants to expect the world. But um, yeah, go with lower expectations. Hey, I like that. Let's just keep going with that. Hmm. All right, I like that one. Um, man. Man, oh man. Um, I think that my advice for this week is going to be... I've said this, similar things for, for weeks now, so I want to I wanna mix it up. Um, <laughs> On the low, you kind of give the same advice every week with different words. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> I'm trying, to, trying to go really different. Um... Okay, I'll, I'll do one that I've tried to commit to. Go the extra step. Um, go the extra mile. I'm currently coaching a, a basketball team. Uh, they're, they'll be 11th graders next year. And, you know, I, I, I have a lot going on. Got the YouTubes. I got other stuff. I got family. I got, you know, whatever. But uh, we have three practices this week. And I'll be getting there extra early tomorrow to prep for the games. And, like, there is a super great feeling satisfaction that comes out of you knowing you've given your best, whether it's to people or to a project, to a team, to an effort. Um, I think that's a very understated and underrated feeling of like sometimes the more you give and the more time you spend, the more focused you are and and the better you feel. And that's been the case for me. You know, we had, we had an extra practice tonight. Um, We only had four guys who were able to make it, but like those guys are so locked in for the weekend. I don't know. Like it was just, it was great to, to make that commitment and try to, strive for you know for for greatness and i think that complacency and mediocrity um are too easily accepted so strive push commit dedicate and uh see see what kind of good things you can create we're going to create more videos for you this week a lot of them coming your way got some cool ones this weekend involving fortnite involving customization and involving other things related to our little silly switchy until that time everybody thanks so much for watching hope you enjoyed the beefy episode today we're back to that 50 minute mark Um, So we'll get us out of here. Thanks so much, everybody. We love you. Keep those comments, questions, theories, thoughts, ideas, and insights coming. We appreciate you. Thanks again for 200K. It's awesome to see the channel grow and the community evolve, and we cannot wait to keep on bringing our commitment and dedication to you, to the Switch, and to the channel known as Switch Force. So until that time, everyone, for myself and Gabe, Switch Force out.